Good morning. This is Dr. Khaled Ahmed Al Hadili, interventional pediatric cardiologist. I will present to you two lectures on congenital heart disease. Today, start with the first lecture. Start with the definition of congenital heart disease. What's congenital heart disease? Actually, congenital heart disease is a group of abnormality or defects in the structure of the heart or great vessels. Regarded as the most common birth defect, it occurs in 1% of live births. The recurrence risk in offspring is 3 to 5%. The etiology of congenital heart disease are usually multifactorial. That means there is a genetic predisposition in addition to environmental exposure. When both of them present, may predispose to congenital heart disease. This table shows a list of examples on environmental factors or exposure that may cause congenital or predispose to congenital heart disease. These include, for example, first maternal disorder, example maternal infection in rupilla infection, baby can affected by patent ductus arteriosus or peripheral pulmonary stenosis. Maternal SLP, baby may come with complete heart block. Diabetes mellitus, increase in infant or diabetic mother, the risk of congenital heart disease is significantly increased. Maternal exposure to medication, for example, warfarin, and can cause pulmonary valve stenosis and PDA. Or fetal alcohol syndrome can cause uh, fetal ASD or uh, neonatal ASD, VSD, tetralogy of fault. If there is some chromosomal abnormalities that's associated with high risk of congenital heart disease. For example, uh, trisomy 21, and in case of Down syndrome, which is the most common one, can cause AV canal or complete arteriovenous defect or VSD. Edward syndrome, Patu syndrome, Turner syndrome, Williams, Nonan syndrome, all of them, Diger syndrome, all of them can associate with increased risk of congenital heart disease. So the inheritance mode of inheritance or etiology in congenital heart disease is usually multifactorial. Genetic predisposition plus exposure to maternal disease, drugs, or there is a chromosomal abnormalities. Congenital heart disease classified into three major groups according to its pathophysiology. The first group with left right chart, or what's called acyanotic congenital heart disease. Example for that is VSD, ventricular septal defect, or ASD, arterial septal defect, or PDA, patent ductus arteriosus. The patient here, there is a left right chart, left to right chart, and the patient is not sinus. The second group is the cyanotic congenital heart disease where there is a right to left shunt as in tetralogy of follow, transposition of a great artery, tricast atresia, trancus arteriosus, and total anomalous pulmonary venous return. The third group is the obstructive lesion. For example, aortic stenosis, pulmonary stenosis, and coarctation of aorta. Today we'll start with the Acyanotic group. And the first example is arterial septal defect. What is arterial septal defect? It is a defect that is present between the two arteria in the interarterial septum. So this is the left atrium, and this is the right atrium, and this is the interarterial septum. Should be intact. In patient with arterial septal defect, there is a defect in the interarterial septum. There is a female predominance, two to one in more common in female. 
there is a fourth type of ASD depend on the location of the defect in the intraarterial septum. The most common type is the secondum ASD, account for 75% of ASD. That's occur the defect in the area of foramen ovale, usually central. The second most common is the primum ISD, 20%, the lower part of the interarterial septum, near the endocardial cushion. The third part, the third type is sinus venosus ASD, near the entrance of SVC or IVC, here, near the SVC or IVC. And the least common is the coronary sinus ASD, near the ostium of coronary sinus. The most important two types is the ASD secundum and ASD primum. In case of ASD, there is a left to right shot at the level of the arteria between the blood comes from the left atrium, pass through the defect ASD into the right atrium, then into the right ventricle, then push to the pulmonary artery, pulmonary circulation. So there is excess volume of, of blood in the right side of the heart and excess pulmonary of blood flow. Clinical manifestation, patients with ASD usually are symptomatic. Can present with symptom, yes, can I present with symptom of, for example, decreased exercise tolerance, for example, easy fatigability, for example, recurrent chest infection, and maybe rarely can I present with heart failure. But most of the patients are usually asymptomatic. And become symptomatic later on, after third, in the third or fourth decades of life, can present with right side failure, or can, can present with, with arrhythmia. The characteristic as called tetary finding is white and fixed splitting of the ST. This is characteristic for AST. Also on auscultation, there is soft ejection systolic murmur, grade two to three, usually in the pulmonary area. As we said, there is increased pulmonary blood flow. So the murmur is due to overflow across the pulmonary valve, causing ejection systolic murmur at the pulmonary area. Of course, not in a small ASD, moderate to large size ASD. In ECG, there is a right axis deviation and right bundle branch block. Right bundle branch block, that's mean what? That's mean right volume, right ventricle volume overload. So RV volume overload. You see here, there is in V1, there is RSR pattern. RSR pattern, which is right bundle branch block, that's mean RV volume overload. This is in secondum ISD, right axis deviation and right ventral branch block. In a primum ISD, there is left axis deviation and right ventral branch block. This is the difference between secondum ISD and the primum ISD in ECG. Both of them have a right axis deviation, uh, both of them have a right ventral branch block, but in secondum, there is a right axis deviation and in a primum, there is left axis deviation. By chest x-ray, there is a cardiomegaly, of course cardiomegaly because of RI dilatation, RV dilatation, and there is an increased pulmonary vascular markings, an increased pulmonary vascular markings because of increased pulmonary blood flow, and a prominent pulmonary artery, prominent pulmonary artery segment when the shunt is significant, moderate to large shunt. Okay, so cardiomegaly, 
increased pulmonary vascular marking and prominent PA segment or pulmonary artery segment. Use of ECHO in the diagnosis of uh, ASD is definitive. So, the position, the anatomy, the uh, effect, hemodynamic effect of the defect, all these uh, parameters can be assessed by the ECHO. So, this is the left atrium, this is the right atrium, and this is the RV, right ventricle, this is the LV, left ventricle. And this is interarterial septum, and you show there, and you see here a large defect in between the LA and RV. In addition, there is a dilatation of the right side of the heart more than the left side of the heart. So, ECHO is definitive diagnosis for ASD. Natural history of ASD includes spontaneous closure of the defect occur in more than 80% of patients with defect 3 to 8 mm before one and a half year of age. Of course, if the defect is less than 300%, it will be, it will be closed. If the defect 3 to Eight, there is a 50% chance. If more than eight, rarely close spontaneous. It may decrease in size. Okay, but it is rarely closed uh, if more than eight millimeter. If the defect is large and the left untreated, so arrhythmia, pulmonary hypertension may develop in the third or fourth decades of life. How we manage the patient with ASD? Start with the medical treatment. First point, exercise restriction is not required, unless symptomatic. And if symptomatic, according to the degree of symptoms. So basically, there is no need to restrict the child from activity. Number two, if the patient, as we said, rarely can present with heart failure. If the patient with heart failure, so treat with anti -failure. Third point is closure. When the defect uh, indicated to be closed, then transcatheter closure of the defect using a catheter delivery system and use of a closure device has become a preferred method for second dump closure. Through the, uh, put a catheter, uh, through the uh, femoral vein to reach the RA and across the defect and put a stent or sorry put a device this is arterial septal device in the uh, defect and that's all look to this eco image there is a large ASD between LA and RA and after closure this is the ASD device in situ. Advantage of non-surgical closure, I mean transcatheter closure, including less than 24 hour of hospital stay, so rapid discharge, and rapid recovery, and no residual thoracotomy scar, and success rate is very high. Okay, so to avoid surgery and one day intervention uh, with a transcatheter closure of ASD. Of course, secondum ASD. Secondum ASD with uh, anatomically amenable uh, defects. Surgical closure of the arterial septal defect. For patients with primum ASD, there is no, till now, there is no device to close primum ASD and sinus venosus defect. Both of them close surgically is a must. As some patient with uh, secondum ASD, if there is a deficit rim or in, if there is a certain anatomic uh, consideration that's inappropriate for transcatheter closure, also 
need surgical closure. Of course, surgical closure is indicated when there is a significant left to right shunt with a QPQS of 1.5 to 1 or greater. Usually, if patient is asymptomatic, the time of a closure, whether transcatheter closure or surgical closure, electively from the age of two years to five years. Okay. The second example of acerinic congenital heart disease include ventricular septal defect. What is the ventricular septal defect? The same as in an arterial septal defect. There is a defect in the septum separated the left ventricle from the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. This is interventricular septum. And this is the right ventricle. When there is a defect in between, that is called ventricular septal defect, which is the most common congenital heart disease account for 30% of <coughs> of congenital heart disease according to the location of the defect in the uh, interventricular septum the VSD divided into four types first let us see the interventricular septum some anatomic points if you look to the interventricular septum from the RV side this is, uh, this is RV free wall, excised, and this is the septum, interventricular septum. This is RA, this is tricus valve, this is pulmonary artery, this is pulmonary valve. Okay, so look to the interventricular septum from the RV. The septum divided into four portions. The first portion, it's called inlet portion. The second portion is a trapecular portion or muscular portion. The third point or the third part of the septum is the outlet septum. This is outlet septum. And the small area of perimembranous or membranous septum. All these four parts compose the interventricular septum. According to the location of the defect, if the defect occur in the membranous area and extend to adjacent area, it is called perimembranous type. Perimembranous VSD, which is the most common type of VSD, count to 75%. Okay? The second type is the muscular VSD. If it's if the defect occur in the in this area, the trapecular septum, muscular septum. It's a count up to 20%. The, le the le less common one is the inlet VSD. If occurred in the inlet portion, it's called inlet VSD. And outlet, if it's occurred in the outlet portion, outlet septum. Inlet and outlet is less common than the most common perimembranous and the next most common, the muscular. So the most common type of VSD is perimembranous. Okay, so perimembranous occur in the membranous septum or adjacent area, uh, muscular in the trapecular septum, anywhere here. Outlet septum, if the defect occur here, it is outlet VSD. If, uh, if the defect occur here, it's inlet VSD. According to the size of the defect, the VSD is classified into small VSD, moderate VSD and large size VSD. The importance of this classification, the size, is the hemodynamic effect. So the effect of a small ASD, not like the effect of moderate and large size ASD. Okay? So small ASD, if the size of the defect or diameter of the defect is less than one third of the aorta size. Okay? If the defect is less than one third of the aorta annulus, this is a small. If more than one third, but less than half of the size or 50% of the size of the aortic annulus, this is moderate size. And large size, if the size of the defect 
of the VSD is more than half the size of the aorta annulus. Okay, this is important. Why? As we said, because if there is left to right shunt and volume overload and pulmonary overflow, all these affected by the size of the defect. Okay. So, in the presence of the defect and during systole, there is a flow from the left ventricle toward the right ventricle. So, blood that is coming from the LA to LV, divided part of it goes to the aorta, to the system, to the systemic circulation, and part of it goes to the right ventricle, to the RV. And the amount of volume that is passed is depend on the size, depend on pulmonary vascular resistance. Okay? With increased amount of blood that's flow from the LV through the VSD to the RV to the PA, there will be an increased pulmonary venous return. So there is overflow on the left side. There is over volume, overload on the volume overload on the late side of the heart. With time, this may cause the uh, pulmonary circulation to constrict and to cause vasoconstriction as a protective mechanism. This is a result of from pulmonary overflow. That's causing pulmonary vascular resistance and pulmonary hypertension to protect the lung from the pulmonary overflow. So clinical presentation, patients with small VSDs are asymptomatic usually, with normal growth and developments. The only feature that's present in them is the systolic loud, systolic normal. Patient with moderate and large defects. There is a feature of delayed growth, repeated pulmonary infection, congestive heart failure, and decreased exercise tolerance are relatively common. If patient with large defect and left untreated and excessive pulmonary blood flow, so pulmonary vascular obstructive disease or pulmonary, or pulmonary hypertension may develop and cyanosis and decreased level of activity may result. This is in end stage uh, cases. In a small VSD, loud pan systolic murmur at the lower left external edge with a quiet sound, uh, I mean pulmonary second heart sound. In moderate and large VSD, patient tachypneic, tachycardic, large liver, active precordium, soft pan systolic murmur, the, the relation of the murmur with the defect, with a small defect, the murmur is loud because the shunt, there is a significant gradient between two ventricles, so the shunt is loud, turbulence. In case with large defect, so the gradient between two ventricles are uh, small. Is a small, sorry. So the murmur is soft. Apical mid diastolic murmur because of an increased flow through the mitral valve and loud pulmonary second heart sound. That means there is an element of pulmonary hypertension. By ECG, small defect, usually normal. There is no ECG changes. In moderate VSD, there is a left atrial enlargement. There is late ventricular hypertrophy. A large defect may be biventricular hypertrophy. In patients with pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary vascular obstructive disease, there may be pure RVH, right ventricular hypertrophy. As we said, pulmonary, pulmonary vena occlusive disease or vaso occlusive disease, that's been severe pulmonary hypertension, irreversible, advanced stage, lingual alien. This is the last or the end stage of the disease, Eisenmenger disease. May be present with pure RVH. By the X ray, the cardiomegaly override degree. There is a pulmonary vascular markings. An increase, of course, because of increased pulmonary blood flow. In patient with PVOD, pulmonary vaso-occlusive disease, 
the heart is no longer enlarged. Why? Because the shunt is decreased because the pressure of the RV is equal to the pressure of the LV. So there is no significant gradient to cause shunting from the LV to RV. So the cardiac size returns to back. With a large so cardiomegaly, there is no cardiomegaly, there is no uh, main PA enlargement, but the peripheral pulmonary arteries decrease and the pulmonary blood flow somewhat uh, decrease and oligomic gland may present. So by x-ray, depending on the size of the PSD, it could be normal, as I said, in, in, in small defects. Could be there is a cardiomegaly of varying degree, depend on the defect, and increase pulmonary vascular markings. And in case of pulmonary hypertension, no more cardiomegaly, and there is a prominent main pulmonary arteries, uh, peripheral pulmonary arteries decrease, and uh, peripheral perfusion or uh, markings uh, uh, decrease and give an oligomic line. This is in PVOT. ECHO again, the most accurate diagnosis of the position and size of the VSD and hemodynamic effect of VSD. Again, this is LV, this is, sorry, this is LI, this is LV, this is RV, this is LI, RI, this is interarterial septum, this is interventricular septum. Okay, you note that there is enlargement of the left side of the heart in comparison with the patient with the VSD, uh, we saw that the uh, enlarged chamber is the right side of the heart is enlarged. So here, enlargement of the left side, that's mean there is a volume overload on the left side. There is a defect in the in this area, in perimembranous area. Okay, this is by color. There is a turbulence flow from the LV to the RV. This is in perimembranous area. This is another example in the muscular area. So this is muscular defect, muscular VSD. This is interventricular septum, and this is small defect between the LV and RV and the area in the area of muscular septum. Of course, spontaneous closure can occur in patients with VSD in about 30 to 40 percent of all type of VSD. Most of it occur in muscular VSD. 80 percent of muscular VSD can be closed spontaneously. Of course, most frequently in small defects than in large defects, and more often in the first year of life than thereafter especially in the first two years, is, is high potential, high, high possibility of a closure in the first two years. Congestive heart failure develops in infants with large defect, but usually not until six to eight weeks of age. Why? Because pulmonary vascular resistance after delivery of neonate, pulmonary vascular resistance high and start to drop within six to eight weeks. So when the pulmonary vascular resistance is high, that's mean the RV pressure is high. That's mean the amount of volume or the volume of blood that is moved from or shunted from the LV to the RV is small. So there is no little effect. So heart failure not appear in the first six to eight weeks. After that may develop. In PVOD or pulmonary severe pulmonary hypertension, or pulmonary vascular obstructive disease may begin to develop as early as 6 to 12 months of age in patients with large and restrictive ventricular septal defect. Management, medical management, first treatment of congestive heart failure with diuretics after low diuretic, reducers, and sometimes digoxin. We will discuss the treatment of heart failure separately in the next lecture, inshallah. Again, no need for restriction, exercise restriction. This is depend on the state of the condition, but basically there is no need. But if advanced heart failure, if there is pulmonary hypertension, so individualized uh, case by case. Proper dental hygiene. It is very important to prevent infective endocarditis. 
improve caloric intake. Also, it is part of treatment of heart failure. Again, we will discuss next lecture, inshallah. Closure of the defect. Again, transcatheter device closure of the VSD is possible when the defect is anatomically amenable or when it is difficult to access surgically. For example, in case of apical VSD that's occur in the in the uh, near the apex, this is type of muscular VSD. It is difficult for the surgeon to reach the defect, so it's better to be closed by transcatheter closure. Again, different type of muscular VSDs, uh, outlet VSD can be closed, perimembranous VSD can be closed uh, by transcatheter closure. Again, the same as in ASD, we said it is it is a safe procedure and take less than 24 hour admission, rapid recovery, no need for open heart surgery and bypass. All these can be uh, avoided by transcatheter closure. If there is indication for surgical closure, for example, if the patient is unamenable un for transcatheter closure, then direct closure of the defect surgically is performed using either pericardial patch or uh, prosthetic patch. Uh, with direct suturing of the defect, this is open heart surgery and using bypass machine. Timing, in fact, with congenital uh, heart, with congestive heart failure and failure to thrive and response to medical therapy should be closed at any age, including early infancy. Okay, so heart failure and response to therapy and failure to thrive and response to therapy, that's indication for closure. Infants with large VSD and evidence of increased pulmonary vascular resistance should be closed as soon as possible. Okay usually occur in, in, in large VSD. That's mean pulmonary hypertension and large VSD. Infant who respond to medical therapy and controlled by medical therapy can be closed electively from one to two to two years. In patient with asymptomatic VSD may be closed between two and four years of age. Okay, this is about the VSD. The third example of uh, acyanotic congenital heart disease is patent ductus arteriosus. What is patent ductus arteriosus? Patent ductus arteriosus is a connection, is a duct that connects the aorta with the pulmonary artery. This is pulmonary artery, and this is the aorta, and this is the BDA, the connection between the aorta and pulmonary after. It is essential and necessary for fetal life, but can be it should be closed spontaneously after uh, delivery. If BDA it has failed to close by one month after the expected date of delivery due to a defect in the uh, constructing mechanism of the defect, so this can result in a symptom of left to right shunt similar to that of VSD. So again, as in case of VSD, depending on the size of the PTA, the presentation is uh, depend on the size of the PTA and depend on the degree of pulmonary vascular resistance. If a small PTA, so there is no symptoms may be asymptomatic. If it is large, PDA can cause failure to thrive, congestive heart failure, pulmonary hypertension. Okay. The most characteristic finding in patient with PDA, a sculptory finding, is the continuous murmur. That's machinery murmur. That means systolic, diastolic, continuous murmur, systolic and diastolic murmur because the gradient is maintained, especially in small VSD, uh, small BDAs, because the gradient is maintained con during systole and distole, diastole, between the aorta and pulmonary artery. The peripheral pulses sh examination show pulse pressure, wide pulse pressure, collapsing pulse or pounding 
pulse. Again, ECG finding, uh, chest X-ray finding, also depend on the uh, size of the PDA and if a small size PDA, so it is normal. If it is large, the same as uh, ECG and chest X-ray finding in PDA. I mean cardiomegaly, right, uh, left side dilatation, LVH, LA dilatation, okay, in increased pulmonary vascular markings, and so on. The diagnostic uh, investigation is the echocardiography. You see here, here the turbulence flow from the aorta. This is the aorta. This is the pulmonary artery. So flow from the aorta to the pulmonary artery by echo. And this is the continuous flow during systole, diastole, systole, diastole. Oh, this is characteristic for PDA. Okay, so uh, investigation of choice is the echocardiography. How to manage a patient with PDA? Closure is recommended to abolish lifelong risk of bacterial endocarditis and pulmonary hypertension. If the patient with heart failure, so treat the heart failure with anti failure. If neonate presented with especially premature, presented with uh, PDA can be managed medically with infusion or oral uh, endomethacine or uh, profen and paracetamol that may enhance the closure of the PDA. Again, transcatheter closure is the preferred method and uh, method of choice for closing the uh, PDA using a device or coil depend on the size. Rarely, rarely occasionally surgical ligation is required if the uh, PDA is so large and the, there is no uh, suitable device for closure. Okay, this is regarding PDA. Uh, in summary, this is uh, in this lecture about the ascent congenital heart disease, we discuss the left to right shunt in ASD, in VSD, and in PDA, and how to manage them medically, and what is the option, other option of closure. Please, for any question, you can uh, and you feel free to ask any question, either on Telegram or email. Thank you for listening.